So first, observation versus experiment. What's the difference? Observation, you're looking at something. Yeah. Experiment, you're actually doing something. Yeah, so uh, which one has more freedom? Experiment. Observation. Experiment. Huh. Uh, I guess it dep depends on how you define freedom. I, I, I meant to say that for experiment, you can you have the control to change things, right? Yeah. Whereas observation, you don't have control to change things. It's just something that happens. Yeah. So, uh, for example, uh, if you wanted to know whether uh, people who have had COVID has uh, lower lung, ca lung capacity or something. Uh, you can't make some people <laughs> have COVID. That would be unethical, right? So you can't do an experimental study with that. Rather, all you can do is you have to just go to a hospital and, and uh, measure people who are infected, uh, their lung capacity or something. Uh, so that, that's observation. Uh, whereas experiments, you can actually control it. You can uh, subject your experimental unit or some people under certain medications or some kind of therapy or if uh, it's risky for humans to go through those you might use uh, rats or monkeys or stuff like that so we can have a better life. Yeah. So that <laughs> that's what that's what experiment is. Right? Okay. So uh, and then uh, Experimental units. What's an experimental unit? It's like the smallest unit of your experiment. Okay. So, for example, if you are uh, doing an agricultural study and you divide the uh, plot, a big plot of land by, uh, I mean, small squares of say uh, eight by eight feet squares, and then you have plants and you, you subject it under various different uh, fertilizers and uh, other things, okay? In that case, the experimental unit will be each plot of eight, eight foot by eight foot land, okay? If uh, you're doing a drug trial, then each patient will be the experimental unit, okay? Uh, if you're doing, like uh, we said, the uh, experiments with rats, then each Rat will be an experimental unit. Now, factors are uh, the, the variables that would make changes in, in some kind of a response variable. So, uh, if you're doing drug trial, factors will be the amount of dr drug that you you put it. Okay, so uh, factors could be if you're doing a placebo test with uh, two other brand name drugs. So let's say you have three brand name drugs and one placebo. Okay, how many factors do you have? <laughs> Four. No, no. You just have one one factor. That's one factor because uh, uh, the factor is the type of drug administered. Okay, but the four would be the levels. Okay. Because there, there are four different ways that this factor can be applied to in each experimental unit. Is this okay? okay. Uh, and, and if you just have a one factor, if it's just drugs, then uh, levels will be the same thing as treatments. But uh, if you have more than one factors, then levels of uh, you, you need several levels to have one treatment. So an example of this is, let's say you're trying to uh, research a cancer drug with uh, additional chemotherapy. Okay? So uh, one factor is whether you have or have not a ca ca chemotherapy. Another factor is whether you use the drug or this, the, the trial drug or the placebo. Okay? So uh, Drug is one factor, the chemotherapy is one factor, and what's the le how many levels does the drug have in the one that I just described? It's placebo or the trial drug, so how many levels? Two. Two levels, right? 
And how about uh, the chemo? It's also two because it's either you have it or you have not, okay? And then uh, a treatment would be the combination of the two, two levels. So one person could have chemo with the trial drug, another person would have chemo with the placebo, and then you may have chemo with the, uh, with the uh, no chemo with the placebo, and so and so on, okay? So a treatment would be a combination of levels. And treatment and levels will be equal when, when, when are those equal? When, when you have one. one factor, okay? That's one factor. Okay. And uh, what you measure in the experiment, uh, in, in the experiments, what you measure is the response variable. And uh, you probably want to uh, measure the, how, how much uh, the tumor has shrunken. Okay, so if, uh, uh, the tumor shrunk by 10% or 20% or 30%. There are different responses the pa patient would have, right? So that will be the response variable, and you measure that to figure out what kind of uh, outcomes you can have, okay? Now, if you have just one factor, so there, there are several kind of design patterns. Uh, one is uh, if you have one factor, In this case, levels will be same as treatments. And then an ideal way to design your experiment would be have the groups divided equally to all the factors, right? So if you had like uh, drug A, drug B, drug C, and then, if you had uh, a placebo, let's say you're trying, trying to do this kind of experiment, and uh, you wanted to enlist uh, 2,000 people for this trial, then what's the most ideal way to divide people? 500. 500 each, right? So if you divide the entire population into equal amounts for each levels of this one factor research, such a, a, such, such a way of doing the experiment is called a one-way Uh, doing it just blindly like this is not the ideal one and we actually saw that before because uh, before we had like a, a comparison of two means with two samples right and uh, we had one mean one another mean and if you wanted to know if one's bigger than the other, the test statistic was you subtract and you divide it by square root of <coughs> sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. That's, that's how we did it, right? Uh, but this is assuming that you didn't, you didn't really, uh, you, you just had two drugs, okay? And then, and then uh, you didn't have the same person go through both therapy. Rather, what happened was uh, you randomly assigned drugs, and, and these two people are completely independent. Therefore, the two outcomes will be completely independent, right? But we also learned that there's a slightly better way to do, do this. What was the slightly better way? Do you remember? Rather than having those two populations completely independent, you, you could what? You could you could do a paired test, right? What is the paired test? See the difference between the, each one? Yeah, where, where you make the same person go through both drugs, mm -hmm. okay? You take one drug for first week and another drug the second week or vice versa. And if you do that, then because you have the same experimental unit going through both, you kind of expect that there will be some kind of a, a correlation between the two. Okay, uh, and if there's a correlation, we found out that the difference 
would have a smaller variance than this one. That's what we, I calculated last time. Okay? So pair design is better than just having chosen people with, without having any relationship between them. Okay? So, uh, so that, that's something that we already observed, and, and that's where this randomized block design comes in. So when you do randomized block design of a one-factor uh, question, Here's what you do. You uh, rather than just assigning 500 people separately, you make some hypothesis. Maybe the way that people respond differently with these different drugs depends on age, race, sex, and what else? Uh, Height, weight. Maybe that. Okay. Uh, obese or not obese, something like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, so what you do is you divide the two thousand people with those considerations. So maybe you might you might have one group is like females uh, under thirty. Okay. Another group would be females uh, between thirty to forty. And then females between 50 to 60. You have that group, okay, each individual. And then now you have males 30 to 40, and then something like this. And we, you can also divide by ethnicity. Okay? So you do that, and what you what you expect is that by doing that and forming one block, so what you do is you, you form one block of four people. Okay, you have one block of four people where. If within one block, people would have uh, similar age, same sex, same age, race, something like that. Okay? And you, 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 you make these blocks, and you have 500 of these blocks now. Still 2,000 people, right? Well, you make 500 of these, these blocks. And then, randomly assign these drug A, B, C, and placebo in different ways. Okay? Just randomly assign then if you do that, you would still expect some kind of a co correlation between these two values, right? And if you have correlation, then again, for the same reason that we observed in the pair test, the, the correlation allows you to have smaller variance, and therefore, uh, there's a better way to find the outcome of this experiment, okay? So that's called randomized block design, right? Okay, good.